Howdy folks, Kirk J. Lou here with Kirk Giordano Plastery. Today I want to explain something that you guys can get, have done from Home Depot. Say, the owner here, he built this uh, shed here. It's a pretty cool shed. And he ordered this from um, Home Depot. I guess you get it from Home Depot Lowe's. It's Sacrete. What is Sacrete? It's similar to Quickrete. It's similar to a whole bunch of other products. But this Sacrete here, you're allowed to put it on about three-eighths of an inch at a time. It's a little complicated, so I'll show you how I do it to explain it further or it more in depth. Anyway, this is basically Portland cement mixed with the sand. All you do is add water, guys. Now, uh, we're going to put some accelerators in it to accelerate it. This brown stuff, that's called lumnite, L-U-M-N-I-T-E, uh, calcium. What Lou has got here is he's got um, the mixer filled about here. It's, uh, it's enough to get us started with all same-day material, guys. When you can do the scratch in a brown coat, do not overmix. So what we do is we mix it up slow, turn it off. We turn it on when we're getting ready to pour it. And fortunately, right now, we're going to do this, and it's about 100 degrees. How about that? Anyway, I'm gonna, I'll show you what we'll do. Um, trying to get out of the way of uh, dust and all that crap. So we're going to get set up. Jay's going to set me up on this wall. I'm going to explain how to apply this sacrete. If you know how to explain or if you know how to apply sacrete, you can apply a lot of stuff. While I'm on that subject, guys, here's some of the stuff you don't know. It's behind the scenes stuff. We usually buy a premium cement. We buy it at the material yard. What's a premium cement? It has Lime and common in it. What is lime? It's a plasterizer, so it spreads easily. What is common? It's uh, for hardness, durability. You add both of them together, it comes in that. Then we add sand. Now, we generally use our own sand. We, what we'll do is we'll put three times as much sand uh, per bag. So if we're putting a 100-pound bag, we're putting 300 pounds more of sand. This sacrete, guys, it's simple. That's why Home Depot is selling it to all you homeowners. Uh, no, I don't work for Home Depot. But all you do is put this in the mixer. Don't overmix it and apply it, guys. It's got the sand already in it. We're going to show you how, uh, or I'm going to show you how we do it. I'm going to apply it and explain a few more things. thought we'd show you the whole process. We're going to scratch and brown this entire wall. Since it's going to get a color coat, we're going to hard rubber float it. Hard rubber. Compress it for the next coat, which is a third coat. Now this mud here, this is again sacrete. And sacrete, uh, we have an accelerator in here called luminite, calcium aluminate. And that accelerates this even more than the accelerator that, say, it comes with. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to go ahead and take this down to, say, about this level right here. Hey, Lou. Want to grab me uh, a cheater, please? The old cheater. When I was working union, the cheaters were outlawed you couldn't use them because they said man you use a cheater you put way too much mud on you work the hell out of the hot carriers they can't keep up and i thought well i hot carried a lot of years uh you got a hot carry before you can plaster it's like you gotta walk before you could run but anyway that's another story the old cheaters so what i'm doing is Taking it all the way to the top here. Once I get it to the top, I'm going to take this all the way over here now and repeat the same process. I'll tell you what, I like this sack creed already. It's like trying to spread butter or whipping cream. That's nice. Some of the products we use. Um, <laughs> You got to have that lime in there, guys, that so-called plasterizer, because plasterizers make it spread easy like this. 
Okay. Now because I'm going to tear the scaffold down soon, I'm going to take it right to where I'm comfortable from the ground. <laughs> and I'm kind of tall, so I'll drop it down uh, where I'm comfortable with it. Oh, a cheater. Here's what I do, guys. I'll take it down to where I'm comfortable. Like so. And then I'll use a, well, we call them cheater when we worked um, with big crews. These are Go Devils, G-O Devils. Who came up with that name? No idea. Um, I'll probably need a little bit of mud, guys. What I do is I fill this Go Devil up. And I'll just apply it from there. This. Now I'm using my lats, guys. Rather than rather than use a hawk and trowel, which uh, if you go to a chiropractor guy, you'll see a plaster on the wall. <laughs> How come? Because <clears throat> this, this particular hawk, this is a large hawk. It's, it's an 18 inch, average hawk is 14. But it holds about 30 pounds. I'll pull off 20 at a time sometime. And so, if I put 30 pounds on here, okay, there's 30 pounds. Now look how kinked my body is. This is holding a lot of weight. This is only pulling off 10 pounds at a time. See, I'm putting that on there. Now, putting that on there. Now, what I like to do, guys, is even though this got some luminite or luminite, we used to call it luminite, but the proper word is luminite. Now, for you guys applying this material, there's a lot of materials, guys, at Home Depot and Lowe's. And a lot of them, uh, they're almost all similar where you don't overmix them, guys. But for the sake of you homeowners who say, well, gee whiz, I want to do like Kirk does. This is where you live, right here. Don't do what Kirk and Jay does and Lou because we're professionals. And you really got to know how to use luminite. It's like 90 bucks a bag, and if you put too much, it'll be stiff right now. We wouldn't be able to work it. So we have to put enough. We have to look at the weather. The weather's about, I guess, around 85 right now. So you have to understand that the paper is sucking the moisture out of the first coat. Now here's where you guys live. Don't go uh, thinking I'm going to double coat it like Kirk because Kirk has got a lot of time in, guys, and I can look at materials and see if they're ready to go and when I say ready to go I just mean if they're ready to put your second coat or the follow-up coat on there now this is called a scratcher a scratcher scarfire the red tape measures the depth so I put the red tape now that scores it or rakes it three-eighths of an inch deep now me I'm gonna put a follow-up coat on guys why because I can and then I'm going to drop this down. But again, you guys, if you're watching this, this is how we do it. You don't have to do it our way. We use a lot of chemicals in our stuff. So you just scratch it, drop it down, and scratch that. Leave it alone for another day. But me, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put another coat on it while I'm here. Now, I put 3H just now. And so I'm going to build this up. I'm going to build it up to seven eighths of an inch you do the math guys by the way I don't, I don't know if I mentioned this but this particular material is water resistant if I say it's waterproof the makers of this will call me and say Kirk don't ever use that nasty word nothing's waterproof but it's water resistant so it has its benefits guys
And what I'm doing now, guys, is this is called a, a back-to-back -back coat or a second coat, a brown coat. And no, it's not brown, but it's gray. And so I'm going to do my top right now. I'm putting more on here. Boom. Take it right to that wood. Take it a little past that wood. Here, take it past the wood. Okay. Finish that top. Squeeze it up in there, guys. If you got these trusses, put it on your hand, put it in your hand, and hit it, tap it in there, and move on. Okay. It doesn't have to be pretty, guys. A uh, couple more shovels, please, Jay. All right. So what I'm doing now is I'm going past this screed. This is our fascia board or our template, our guide. Got to have a guide, guys. <laughs> anyway, so I'm putting it on. As I put it on, I know to push in, push up, pull back. It's a matter of using the tools. And that's why the trowel I use is five inches wide. It flexes. If you got a trowel that's only four inches wide, that's for concrete, guys. Don't try. Well, you could use it for this, but you won't be as successful as what I'm doing now because it won't flex. I'm pushing this in there. I'm using skill, not muscle. I'm saving my muscle because I might need it later when it gets to be about 100. So what I'm doing is, again, I'm using skill, guys. And it doesn't matter how ugly this is. I used to say, or when we were shooting this on with pumps, we'd say, put it on fat and ugly. Meaning, if you put it on fat and ugly, you could take a, a derby like this guy here, wet it, wet both sides, because if you try to, if I put this derby on dry, what's going to happen? I'm going to pull all this mud off. So I don't want to pull it off. I want to leave it on. Same thing with the, with the trial I just did. So I'm going to take this, pull it up. Take it, take it, and if the wire or lath is too tight, what will happen? This will just fall right off because there's nothing to bind to it, guys. So Dave, he knew what he was doing when he lathed this. I'm going to put that video in the description because Dave lathed this. And he said he watched our videos to learn how to laugh. And I thought, man, you're going to put us out of business. You're pretty good. Now, that's good enough. Does this have to be pretty? No, because I'm going to hard rubber float it. We're going to take this hard rubber float and say, well, the, the weather's going to dictate when I float it. When do you float it? Soon. Anyway, I'm gonna, we're going to get rid of all this. We're going to move all this, set up on the bottom and get busy. I'll take the rest of that mud off, Jay. Let me, yeah, let me just, there's only a, a couple hawkfuls. Never long.
Ooh, it's a hot day. Hey, uh... <sighs> hey, Lou. Well, you, one of you guys, if you... So I have to bend down a hundred times and stand, hock it to me with a shovel. I got you. I mean, since uh, we got the manpower. We are still recording. Okay. Cool beans. Ready? Yeah. All right, guys, because I don't want to burn out and bend down. A, a few thousand times right now. Jay is going to hock it to me. I like this material. It's got fine sand. I thought it had a heavier sand. And again, guys, if you're still watching us do this stuff, I'm allowing the paper to suck the moisture out of here. I don't want to put two fat coats on because the material is not, it doesn't have that much accelerators in it. So it kind of takes practice to understand accelerators. That's why I'm not going way into depth. I'm saying don't try accelerators, guy. And especially with the price of 90 bucks a bag. Okay. Uh-huh. Cool beans, I'm a... Oh, you can... There you go. Move your bucket? Nah, I'm good. I got this. Uh, what I do, guys, I put it here, push it up, and because it's a five inch trowel, pull it. And that'll fill that. If it was a four inch trowel, that'd be a little bit more difficult. Now we want to keep the mud out of this electrical outlet. All right. Coming toward you. Ah. All right. Fun stuff, guys. Good workout. They actually pay me to do this stuff. Can you believe that? What a country. I can actually wheel you to the other side of you. Okay.
Easy peasy. All right. Okay. Now guys, because I'm judging the, the stucco, Kirk's the best, by the weather and by the accelerators. What I'm gonna do is, we have a full mixer. I'm gonna get some of that mixer out. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna scratch this. I'm gonna scratch this bottom and we're gonna clear some of that mud out of the mixer for obvious reasons. Every job we do, guys, we are improvising and we are not trying to manipulate the material. We're working with the material. We have to know how much time we have. And so, it's just me, Jay and Lou here, but it's a little bitty thing. Uh, I'm gonna let this set and I'm gonna empty out that mixer everywhere else and then I can come right back to this and put my follow-up coat. I want it a little, a little firmer. I want it to set a little bit more. We'll come back. All right, guys. We are, or I'm not sure of the accelerator time because Loom Night gets old. It's like weapons. It's like food. It gets old. So unless you use it all the time, it'll get old. So it's been about a month since we used it. So what I'm doing is, all you plasters in the UK, you know this stuff. I'm just filling this up and I'm allowing that to set because I'm trying to determine how much um, time I have left with this. And it looks like I got way more time than a skilled fellow like me needs. Now what I'm doing is I'm putting some Darby marks in there. This is a serrated Darby. You know, like a tomato knife, it's serrated. It opens it up. It allows it to dry even faster because now the air can get in it. If I steel trowel it like, I know, probably too much information. If I steel trowel it like this, guys, that's gonna take an hour to set while the rest of this is open and it'll set instantly. Just thought I'd point that out. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that alone. Now, I'm going to get back to what we were starting. I don't even have my mic on. But I, uh, I okay, I, I took it off. That's okay. It was this is in my eyeballs. Okay. Uh, Jay. Okay, so here's what we got. Now, naturally, this stuff would take about three hours to set but again I have uh, uh, lumnite in here I'm gonna do a bucket and I'll put it in the video I'm gonna take a half a bucket put this in there and then uh, uh, we're mixing more mud and we're not gonna put no lumenite and I'm gonna do a test to show you guys I'm gonna flip them over just like sand castles at the beach one's gonna come out solid the other is gonna come out just the same way anyway that that'll be in the uh, description so Jay since you're uh, Right there, you wanna? Absolutely. All right, so look at this stuff, guys. This should take three hours to set, but it's already setting, and that's good. Another thing, guys, if you're gonna do this, you don't wanna over trowel it. You don't wanna break the packs. And by troweling the crap out of it, you break the packs. So you just, um, you apply it, let it sit. A lot of people call and they say, hey, Kirk, I tried that. It all fell off. That's because you over it. You broke the pack. Let it get solid, guys. And again, we're using accelerators in here. So if you folks buy this product or a similar product, keep in mind that we're using accelerators. So it's hard to judge it. Okay, so... I'm gonna 
follow up. This is the second coat, guys. How thick am I going? Seven eighths of an inch. How do I know that? <laughs> I'm guessing. It's like, okay, the corner eight here matches the corner here. The weep screed is seven eighths of an inch. So all I do is I follow those grounds, guys. Follow the grounds. All right, thank you. All right, here we go. A little bit right there, looks good. Boom. Ah, these rocks just feel so good. Okay. Now, a minute ago, you saw me finishing up that gable because again, I had to judge the accelerator in here. Jason actually started that, but he can't film himself and I don't know how to use that camera. So I just finished up the top there and now I'm back here. Again, five inch trowel guys. The width is 18. If you guys are gonna do this, buy a trowel that is 14 inches long by five inches wide. And no, it doesn't have to be this type of trowel. You can just get a regular trowel, plastering trowel. This is called a swim pool trowel. I'm partial to it. I've been using it for like 40 years when I used to do swimming pools. All right, so walking over here. Ah, come on now, come on now. Okay, finishing up this little piece right here. Cool beans. Want one more? Uh, please. Yep, yep. Now the fun part. I get to Darby this. And again, like I, I said, you guys can watch how we do it. And you can try to do it like we do. But <clears throat> a lot of people can laugh. But to do the cement work takes a little bit more time, guys. Now, since Lou doesn't watch these videos, I'll tell you, Lou can't even plaster. And he's been doing this stuff for like 30 years. So if you guys decide, well, I'll do my own lath, paper wire, go for it. Call us. We'll do like we did with Dave here. And by the way, I'm going to put that video, Dave Lath, in the description. So that's done. Now I take my handy dandy wet derby. Thank you, sir. Okay. <coughs> Remember, a dry derby, you can't. A dry derby will grab this and pull everything right off. We don't want to do that. Nor do we want to over trowel this. If you over trowel it, you break the packs. What's a pack? That means it's setting, guys. Don't break the pack. Now, I got, <clears throat> if I keep playing with this, I can prove a point. I'll just play with it, play with it, and you'll see a big piece just come right off. But then I'd have to fix it, so I'm not going to do that. Okay, Darby, I'm going to take it. Come up. Come up. All this is is chewing it out now. It's uh, making it true, plumb, and level. Now I'm taking it straight up. You guys try to Darby. This is how you do it, guys. You take a wall. You, you start it here. You come straight up. You don't close your eyes and follow the wall, otherwise you have a Humpty Dumpty wall. Down here, I see a lot of guys, they'll take it and go straight up like this. Now that's what we do also, but take it this way too. And if you take it that way, you could make sure that it's not bowed in the bottom. See what I'm doing? I'm straightening it out, and if I have excess stucco, I put it where it's needed. Take it here, come up. Uptown, there you go. Beautiful. And this doesn't have to be super pretty, guys, because I'm going to hard rubber float it. What's that? I'll show you when we get to it. But for right now, I'm going to take this, chew it out. Here's a weep screed. The weep screed, what we want to do is hug it like that. We want to hug that weep screed. That way it's not all bowed. A lot of you guys might say, how come I got a big hump down here? That's people going straight up like this and letting the wall dictate the move. We dictate it, guys. Our skill level dictates it. Take it off, 
put it on. Boom, boom. And now, I'm a, I would say, according to my time in, which is a long time. Uh, how many of you guys used to do this stuff? And when you were 20, it, people say, man, how long have you been doing it? And you say, I've been doing it like five years when you've only been doing it three. Well, when you get to my stage, <laughs> I'm downplaying it now. I don't want to say I've been doing this over 40 years. Makes me sound like, man, you're too old to do it. But I've been doing this a long time, guys. Anyway, that wall right there is, it's good. And what does that mean? Now, let's check it out. Here's the top stuff. Almost ready. Here's the bottom stuff. I just put it on. Still wet. So, that's going to harden in about 15 minutes, 20. This is going to harden in about 40 minutes. When it does, I'll show you how we hard rubber floated. And no, we're not going to bring the aggregate out. I'll show you something since I'm in this long drawn out video. Okay. Sponge float. This brings out the sand. It brings out the aggregate. You see that? Ooh, that's pretty. That's the sand finish, guys. That you can see the sand. Now this guy here is a hard rubber float. Hard rubber float condenses it, but it's, it's not ready yet. It compacts it so that it's less likely to crack. So what I'm going to do, once this sets in about an hour, I'm going to hard rubber float this. What happens if I wait more than an hour? Then I'll be using the strength of, say, 40 pounds each, each stroke because it's so hard. But if I let it just right, I'll just be using skill and about 5 to 15 pounds pressure to con condense this or compact it. I'll show you that when we get there. Right now we've got to get busy and put some mud on. What do you think, Dave? Now you can do it, right? Yeah. <laughs> here you go, Dave. Dave, give it a shot. I got mud. Don't worry about if we have enough mud. You want to try it? I'll give you my gloves. Okay. Hey, there's lye in here, brother. That lye eats your skin. Look at all my pants have holes here because I kneel in this stucco. The stucco has lye in it. The lye eats your skin. It eats the pants. I go through shoes once every six months. See? I can't even get it off. <laughs> but you did a great laugh job, man. <laughs> I like when you, did, you, you do this on the video. Oh, yeah, the old, uh, I, I'm, what I do is I try to check the uh, consistency of it. Try it here? Sure, try it anywhere. Try it anywhere. Oh. Uh, that's all right, man. You try it anywhere, Dave. <laughs> I'll show you an easy way for a beginner. And then I taught all my kids how to do this. Madeline, Luli, Dan, Carl, everybody. I'll show you a simpler way. Okay. Watch this. Here's what you do. Okay. You drop it. Oh. Drop it. See your right hand. Right. Drop it on that. Okay, once you got it on that, take it. Put it on. But if you try to pull it off like we do, that's a little harder. So try. Blam. Oh, I'll give you. Hold on. Okay, so this in your left hand, this in your right. Drop it, and then put it on like that. Especially if you're going to do the color coat, man. You got to get this. There you go. Man, you got to put us out of business, brother. <laughs> Work. I cool. <laughs> <Jason>. <laughs> One more try. One more try. I'm going to give you a little bit less mud. Again. Okay. So tilt and drop. Tilt. Pull it off. And then curl like you're doing a curl. To do it this way it takes... But if you tilt, drop, grab it, and pull it upward. A little, little easier. But it's not real easy, especially if you haven't never tried it. Beautiful. 
Oh shit, you're gonna put us out of business. That's how to do it, man. You're the man. You. You're the man, Dave. All right, we're gonna get busy. And if, if Dave can do it, you guys probably can't do it because Dave's a professional. He built this. He's a builder. Anyway, I'm gonna quit messing around. Let's uh, get this mud out of here. Okay, guys, we are at the stage where we're gonna hard rubber float it. It's a hard rubber float. You can use a polyurethane. You can use like what they use in the UK, the plastic ones. The idea is to compress the wall. This makes it true and plumb also. You could uh, watch what I do, guys. Okay, we got to feel it. Now, that's, that's pretty hard. And then this I put on afterwards. That's got to be a little bit looser. But, okay. That's, uh, you can do it, Kirk. Now this, it's a, it's a little little stiffer, but you can still do it. All right, guys. So we take this hard rubber float, not the sponge float, because people always get those two confused. All right. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to hold it flat, and we're going to go in circles, little bitty circles, or you can go a great big circle. It doesn't matter. But it's kind of like snowboarding. Keep it flat, guys. Keep it flat and don't over float it. Don't over trowel it because you break the packs and if I keep going for example if I keep going just right here for five minutes what's gonna happen it's gonna fall off because I broke the pack so don't do that and another, we got another coat going on this do we have to make this super pretty not really but as best guys to float it as best as you can so when you're coming back for your other coat or if you wanted to paint it you could paint it so this is how we do it. Now, notice, I'm using skill. I am not using muscle. I am saving my muscle for the ride home. Uh, I'm using skill, guys. This is, this is nothing. This is like uh, the equivalent of three to four pounds. I mean, I'm holding it just with the back of my hand. Now, if I let this another hour, then I won't be able to do that. I have to put all my weight turn red in the face and strain my butt off. Okay, down here, the same thing, guys. We just put it flat. You can't see this, but I'm holding it and I'm lifting one end up. Just, it's hard to detect that. But anyway, that's, this is called hard rubber floating. This is a polyurethane float. And sure, you could use a cork float. And sure, you could use a a plastic float like the UK. There's always someone to say, Kirk, how come you don't use the plastic ones? Uh, I like this particular one. Lastly, guys, if your float is all cockeyed and bent, you're going to make a big mess. I pulled this one out and it still got stuck all over it. And I thought, man, I can't use that. I could, but it took me twice as long. Make sure you got a good clean one. It's not all cockeyed and bent the wrong way like these inside. Otherwise, you'd be here all day trying to do it. Now, if he can do it, we can do it. We thank you guys for watching, and as usual, we'll see you on the next one. All right, folks, we want to thank you all for watching. If you enjoy the videos that we put out, please like and subscribe so that we can keep making these videos for everybody. And as always, from the, from the entire, entire Giordano family, family, we'll, we'll see, see you on the next one. one.